Hi guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So in the last video, hopefully you watched the last video, you, I said that this uh, motor here, this nice uh, Coyote motor, was in its final resting spot. Well, I'm not 100% sure about that. I wasn't 100% sure about it when I said it, but um, that would mean a lot more fabrication work. So for right now, uh, I'm gonna leave it where it's at. I may end up cutting the uh, subframe uh, either out completely or cutting some uh, reliefs in it and then rewelding it back up. So instead of creating the motor mount positions, um, because those may end up becoming lower, um, I'll go ahead and leave it where it stands right now. The reason why I would like to bring it a little bit lower is for twofold. One is to get the center of gravity uh, obviously low, as low as possible. So get this uh, oil pan really to the very, very bottom edge of the frame rail itself, as well as to remove some of the angle that's in the CV joints. Just as a reminder, they're about 13 degrees right now. The maximum those CV joints are, are running at, or should run at, is 25 degrees. Um, Obviously, it, it could work in its current situation, but uh, I might end up changing it on later on. But I don't have to make that decision right now. But what I do have to do is decide where to cut these frame rails off so I can actually start making the rest of the car, the rest of the, uh, in the makes the cabin interior. So this is basically where the firewall is going to live. Um, I've got to actually just do some quick calculations. What I want to be able to do is get a wrench in here, be able to, you know, remove anything should I need to for serviceability. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is put a piece of plywood right up here. And well, you know what? Let's just skip to it and go ahead and get the plywood cut and get a piece right up here and see where, where we need to cut these things. Okay, so we've got the firewall in place, and I really like to use flammable material when I'm making my firewall. That way, if anything does catch on fire in the engine bay, this will go up uh, really quickly, so you don't even have to wait a lot of time. Uh, but seriously, uh, this is actually obviously just temporary. Now I know where to cut these frame rails at. Um, as you can see, it's a little tight, but I can get up in there. Um, the car is going to be actually an open clamshell design, which means that uh, it'll, it'll, the body will probably split right about here, and this is all going to be exposed anyway. So all I really want to make sure I can do is be able to easily pull this belt off, should I have to. I don't want to have, obviously have to drop the engine if I, would, I just want to change the belt. So um, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and cut these uh, frame rails to this length. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut all four of them. Uh, there's uh, two others uh, laying around here that still need to be pocketed because I only pocketed one set so far. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these up and get some measurements and see if I can't get a cross, uh, cross bar, uh, get the back bar crossed here. So that's a big difference now that the frame rails uh, cut off. I actually cut the front and the back as you saw from the video. So the next thing I've got to do is actually get this motor out of here and get these things perfectly squared up. There is a little bit of movement um, with these upper A arms and so I'm going to try to kind of uh, actually shore that up a little bit too to make sure that everything's uh, perfectly aligned um, before I actually uh, uh, actually put the final welds for these cross sections in place. Um, I did say I was going to cut the all four, but I actually just cut the two. I'm going to pocket and cut the other two over the weekend. So anyway, um, let's uh, go ahead and get this thing welded up. It's all about humanity. Okay, as I said in the last little section, uh, I wanted to stiffen up the jig I made uh, with these cross sections. So to do that, I actually went ahead and put my old C7 back on. And then I went ahead and uh, mounted these. I welded some nuts to the top of this, and then I also welded a washer onto these brackets, so these uh, bars here. So now when I take the uh, C7 out of here, there won't be any distortion um, due to the fact that uh, uh, just a simple weight of the tires will cause just a little bit of deflection. 
realistically might be overkill, but hey, it's my project, so I can do what I want. So now I've got to go ahead and start taking this apart and getting the uh, my actual frame rails up here so I can uh, get the sections, uh, the uh, cross links measured up and get those welded in. So uh, let's go ahead and start that. All right, I've got my rails mounted up here. Let's, uh, let's take some uh, measurements and see how well this jig is actually working out. So we'll first do the front here. So that's at 33 and 5 eighths. And the back is at 33 and uh, 33 and 3 eighths. So we've got two eighths of a difference between the front and the back, which is perfectly acceptable. As you can see, I just wanted to make sure that the jig is actually holding in place, but I could actually push on this a little bit on both sides and actually get that, uh, that two eighths out. So what I'm gonna do next is gonna cut some, some basically some tubes up here to get that 33, I think I'll go with 33 and 3 eighths. And I'll do a couple more measurements, and then, but just make sure on that. But uh, that's probably the length I'm going to use, and then I'll go ahead and put a brace between these two rails. It's all about humanity. So I've got the beams cut. It's a little hard to see the back one back there, but it is there. Trust me on that. So the front one here is five feet, two inches. That's roughly the size uh, of a Lamborghini Gallardo from the, from the width. Uh, so that should be plenty of cabin room. I still have to work out the dimensions for going forward, and that's had based on the seating position a little bit. Uh, the rear is just a five foot beam going across, and that's probably gonna end up getting modified over time. I am gonna go ahead and weld it in all the way, but I do know I'm going to probably end up have to cut off maybe the ends because I'm going to actually have to make room for the radiators or, or stuff like that anyway. So um, what I really need to do now though is before I weld these things in is to make sure they are perfectly level, straight, true, all that kind of lovely stuff. So I'm using this DigiPass level. This is the one, um, it's very, very accurate. Uh, I, I bought this specifically for my five axis CNC machine. So when I set that up, I wanted to make sure I was uh, within a millimeter of tolerance of cutting that foam. So this is uh, accurate to 0 0.01, I think. If I remember right, I gotta turn it on and find out, but it's super accurate. 
Uh, this is kind of like my backup one, which is accurate to 0.01. And then this is my digital, uh, digital, basically laser measure, and this is uh, accurate to 132 seconds. So with all these devices, I should be able to go through and make sure everything is nice and square and true and level, and then I'll weld all of these beams up permanently, um, and uh, we'll go from there. So everything is square, level, ready to go. I'll just weld it all up and this part of the frame will be done. I need to actually start going ahead and, and, and figuring out how to attach it to the subframe though. That'll be up next. So let's get this welded. and it is mated to the subcradle, the original C7 subcradle. Um, pretty happy with everything. I did all the leveling. It's level to within 0.02, I think is the maximum out of uh, levelness I have. And everything else measures up to about less than 132nd or 132nd uh, as far as out of spec or out of dimension. So everything is really probably much better than they actually produce at the factory. Um, this beam here is, too, is obviously going across. It needs to be cut. 
and that just put that in there like that to make sure I could square everything up as I kind of got it all welded together. I need to make these front points uh, then for the uh, rest of the sub cradle, but after that, the sub cradle will basically be done, except it needs some gussets and stuff like that. But uh, really made a lot of progress here right now. So we'll go ahead and finish creating the uh, the front mounts for the subframe. And so, so yeah, let's do that now. So uh, as you can see, I actually got, went ahead and put in this front section here. So this part of the frame, the rear section of the frame number one is actually pretty much complete. I've got to put some plates on the end of these, uh, on the end of these beams here, but um, from a structural standpoint, it really is, it's completely solid. Everything is welded up exactly where it should be. And so next up, I'm going to actually start going and making the, um, making the cabin itself. So that'll come off that front beam here. So I'll go ahead and, uh, I guess kind of give you a look around and see how things are put together. Um, Basically, you'll see some plug welds, and I'll just kind of walk through the, uh, the different areas here, and we'll uh, see what that looks like. It's all about humanity. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you're new to my channel and just stumbled across this episode, please consider subscribing and also uh, kind of click that notification so you know when I got a new video posted. Uh, and the next video will be the cabin creation. This, the, the rest of the frame should actually go a lot quicker um, because I didn't have to, I don't obviously have to worry about engine and so forth. So uh, it should be uh, speeding up here as we kind of go along, at least to get the frame done. So uh, pretty excited about that. So uh, stay tuned and as always, thanks for watching.